everyone. Hey guys. You are tuned in with the Gospel Girls yes. and you're here with Witspiration and Amber Nicole. And today we are going to discuss a very controversial and heavy topic. We're going to discuss if Christians can use the N-word. And we know that there's so many different meanings and there's so many different perspectives on this. So we're just going to get down to it. Mm -hmm. um, so first, we always give our uh, foundational scripture and we're yes. going to read it for us today. Because we are the gospel girls, so we have to come Gotta through bring the that gospel, gospel every time. So if you will turn with me to Ephesians 17, oh, Ephesians 4, 17, we're going to look at how to live as children of the light. It says, with the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that is not what you learned about Jesus Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. And then when we skip down to verse 29, it says, Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of rede redemption. So get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. So, really, the focus here is verse 29, where it says, don't use foul or abusive language. And we all know that the N-word falls right under that category. So we're going to have to address it. <laughs> so there's two meanings, like I said. There's the N-I-G-G-E-R and then there's the N-I-G-G-A. Mm -hmm. And there's controversy on whether you can use both or whether you use one or whether you use none at all. Mm -hmm. So first we're just going to come out and tell you the meanings on dictionary.com. So N-I-G-G-E-R -G -G -E um, is, it says, Slang, extremely disparaging and offensive. Um, a, a, con a contemptuous term used to refer to a black person. A, contemptu a contemptuous term to refer to a member of any dark-skinned people. And then it says, also, a contemptuous term used to refer to a person of any racial or ethnic or origin regarding as con 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 contemp contemptuous, contemptible, uh -huh. inferior, and ignorant and etc. So that's the N I G G R word. And also, like if you guys, um, you know, are good with history, you can go back and you know that the term was definitely used to um, discriminate against the slaves who ended up being African Americans as well. So this word has been rooted and it's been used back in history. So it's an old word, and it's old dirty word. It's not good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so we're gonna f go switch uh, to now which the word has derived a little bit from that time and the black community I think specifically has changed the word to be something I guess they consider as um, more positive. So um, dictionary.com also says N-I-G-G-A is, is used mainly among African Americans but also among other minorities and ethnicities in a neutral or familiar way as, and as a friendly term of address. Mm -hmm. It is also common in rap music, however, N-I-G-G-A is taken to be extremely offensive when used by outsiders, which we know. Many people consider this word to be equally as offensive as N-I-G-G-E-R. The words, the words N-I-G-G-E-R and N-I-G-G-A are pronounced alike in certain dialects, and so it has been claimed that they are one and the same word. Mm -hmm. So no matter how you try to slice it, it's still a pejorative term. Like, it's still going to offend the person. It's an offensive term. Um, it's an epithet. So it's kind of like what Amber Rose, we talked about that a few shows ago. The how Amber Rose thing. is trying to empower women through a slut walk when really... No matter how you try to flip it, it's still going to be seen as a demeaning way to live. Because slut is a, a demeaning word. Right. And same thing with the N-I-G-G-E-R, N-I-G-G-A. It's never a term of endearment. 
it's always going to be offensive. And that's why black culture doesn't like any other, it's particularly white people, to use it. Because if it's so empowering, so why can't they call you the N-I-G-G-A if, you're, if it's not going to be offensive? Because we know deep down inside that it is a, just a rude term and you don't want to be called that. I also think that, you know, when it comes to the white perspective, because I, I know I always get a question of, like, what should I do? Like, there's black people, like, I have black friends, and they believe a certain way, but then the other people believe a certain way. You know, like, I just think it would be safe, just for the public, and if you're around people, like, and you just don't know what to do, I feel like you just shouldn't say it at all. Mm -hmm. Because, like, even if it, it, it is okay for your friend, because... I know, well, I'm trying to be changed in the Lord, so, like, I know, like, there are certain words I shouldn't say, and I know that, like, the N-I-G-G-A word is just, like, kind of, I guess it's a slang for the black community, and it's kind of, like, a traditional thing, word, if you want to get down to it, that people have said, like, down the line, so it's hard to, like, erase it. But me, as trying to be a changed person, I don't want to say those words because I know the Lord's not looking at it like how we are looking at it. He's looking at it. It's a bad word. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like if, even if, because I was one of those people like the N-I-G-G-A word, I thought of it as an, like, not an endearing term, but I thought of it as like, hey, that's my brother, that's my sister type of word. So then why not just say my brother and my sister? Exactly. Which they do But do I didn't care. Time. Like, it didn't bother me mm. if, like, my white friend said it to me. Mm. I didn't well not to not to describe me or anything, but like if she was talking about someone or whatever, mm -hmm. and like if she was talking about like or could just call me hey what's up or if I was saying it to her like that, it didn't bother me. But then it bothers other people, so that's where you get into a conflict. So that's why I just think that it shouldn't be said at all. But you know, as you get older, you grow and you grow and you understand. So now that I'm understanding, I'm just like it's really just not a good word to say because it's rooted in ignorance. So from your friend's perspective, she was just trying to be like a friend, trying to relate to you. And by saying N-I-G-G-A, it's like, oh, this is my friend. I can talk with her like that because we're close. But really, when you think about it, it's not something educated. Like, when you know better, you do better. And so, there's she could just say, you know, my friend Whitney, my sister Whitney, whatever. But my inner Whitney, it kind of sounds, like, in hindsight, it's like, ah, no, no. Exactly. Don't, don't do that. But, um... <laughs> I mean, it didn't bother me only because, like, the word was described in that way for so long. Like, for so long, black people have known that word to now be a friend word. It's just a word that I, So I was comfortable with it. It mm -hmm. wasn't. But, and this is where we get into the two words. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their own perspective. The N-I-G-G-A-E-R word is different to me. Because if someone were to come up to me and say that, I would feel offended. I'd be thrown off. Mm -hmm. And then that's where people don't understand. Like, well, if you can't say that, like, you're saying that word, and it's all friendly and buddy-buddy, but then the other word is not. And now, like, you come into a situation where, like, you're, they think you're being a hypocrite. But because of history, I think there are, they do have two different meanings. But since it's based on a word from the beginning that was like discriminatory it's gonna have problems it's like because you're trying to turn something bad good right and it's like with any word it depends on it's not exactly what you say it's how you say it a lot of the time so the n word n-i-g-g-e-r has always it's rooted in slander like that's how it that's the historical you know background of the word They're, they were trying to offend um, like slaveholders and just during a time in a, a period in America when there were drastically unequal rights it's still unequal today in society but we're talking about a period in time when like black people were not seen as humans at all so to know that that's where the word is derived from and then now try to flip it as if it's an term of endearment it just kind of seems uneducated you know when I was a child I spoke like a child and I reasoned like a child but then when I became an adult you put away childish things and so when God coming from a Christian perspective we are supposed to be seeking wisdom and enlightenment and you know improvement in our daily walk trying to become more Christ-like so the worldly things are supposed to fall away from us and we're not supposed to be like a lot too often in the church you can't tell the difference between a Christian and a heathen 
that's a problem because Christians are supposed to be representing Jesus Christ. So no matter what your skin color is, no matter what your cultural background is, because a lot of times the N-I-G-G-A is like a hip-hop term, like your hip-hop culture when you're using that. But, you know, Christianity supersedes that. And so once you become, once you want to dedicate your life to the Lord, now you're not thinking with a hip-hop mindset, you're not trying to be down and cool. No, you're trying to praise the Lord and trying to glorify God with your everyday character and being. So that term just naturally fell away from my vocabulary. You know, when I was yeah. in middle school and like in early stages of high school, that's how, that might be a funny greeting or like, oh, this enter is stupid. Like when you tell Are a you joke. Are you saying that, you do mean ER or the AA? The A one? Um, a a uh, the A one, because the <laughs> ER, you were corny, like yeah. if you use the ER, are you going to pronounce the whole thing? Because yeah. like, it's also part of the culture to not enunciate properly, exactly. or things of that nature. But again, that's a childish mindset. And so once you mature, you're supposed to, that's supposed to be reflected in, you know, your vocabulary. Exactly. And I like to be known as like an educated person, and that would just, def you know, deflect from that. Yeah, and I understand, um, and I'm not going to sit here and say I didn't say it, like yeah. I've said it, like I'm just going to tell you right now, I said it this week because she's, I'm just gonna say something. No, I did say it this week because I was trying to prove a prove a point, and okay. in, in, in my proving a point, I said it, and I said it in a way. Um, I know it, it was it was funny my, the video, but I was just proving a point about somebody else saying a word, and I was saying that they could say it because they're of the background and they're of the minority basically mm -hmm. and I was I just said it so but before I have this video I don't want people to be like well she didn't say that so I don't know why she's sitting here saying against it I said it before I'm not saying that I'm not saying it's good for me to be saying it I need to stop saying it I'm not a person that says it all the time but I have said it and what I'm saying is now that I'm a person who I mean I've always been um I always been saved and I always been in the church and I've always loved God and I knew God but now I took it a step further with a relationship with God now I'm, un I'm understanding things slowly understanding things with a bigger spe spectrum because God is showing me and I just think that now I'm learning and now I'm going to be like this is I'm going to have to work on myself and not even though I don't say that word all the time rarely but I'm going to find other ways to say what I'm trying to say because mm -hmm. I know the Lord's looking at me saying you shouldn't be saying that. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that once I focus my energy on being who God wants me to be and focus my energy on It'll being stop me. who I... You, exactly. Once you focus on the positive, the negatives will automatically drift away. So all you have to do is just focus your attention on how you do want to speak and the words that you do want coming out of your mouth and how you do want to represent yourself and the Lord. And then you don't have to be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to curse anymore. Or just say, I want to have a, you know, larger, yeah. a better diction, a larger vocabulary. Help me sound more educated, Lord, and things of that nature. And then God, yeah. you know, it's, it's definitely going to bless you yeah, through that way. But I just want to get in here for the black community because, like, I don't want people to think that, because you know how the black community, people, our community can get it. But, oh, they're trying to tell us what we can't say. No. We understand completely why the word why we feel like, why you, why we feel like we can say it as black people. I understand why we feel like it because, like, we changed the word, we took it back, it's, it feels like it's a power thing because that was something that they had over us that they kept saying to discriminate us and now we brought it to something to mean something good. I want to speak to that point. Let that. me interject but here because as a black person, I never felt like the N-word was never applying to me. In my me household, either. Me either. No. Who, you, the N-word who? Who are you talking to? And plus, nobody's ever called me the N-word besides a black person in like Doing in, that in, in an endearing way. But outside of that, like the no NIV, one else yeah, has no. No. And so even if they did, I'd be like well, you must be talking about yourself because to me, an N-word is an ignorant person, an uneducated person. It doesn't mean the color of your skin. That might be what it means for a racist person, but I don't, just be, it's not who, about what you're called. It's what you answer to. And you're not that's talking to me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Say I'm the same way. Yeah. Like, that's how I felt. And that's why when I was saying earlier about my friend, when I was, it, I was fine with her to say yeah. it because that was an endearing, the endearing term. Mm -hmm. And I also felt like, I am confident with myself, so if someone did call me the NIGE or what, I'll be just like you, like, I don't know, like, who are you talking yeah. to? So, but I'm just saying, because I know that the black community would be kind of looking at us, like, sideways because they're trying to, they think that we're trying to tell them what to say and what not to say. We're just saying, as Christians... You should take all of that. I understand, like, because I understand, like I said, I said it before and I said it this week. We got to take all of that worldly stuff, even though it's stuff that we've been doing since we were 
but we've been growing up with it and it's something that's a tradition that was always said some of that stuff is worldly so when you are renew yourself in Christ you have to take away the stuff that you used to be used to do right and that's all I'm saying I'm not trying to tell you guys because you guys can say what you want to say mm -hmm. but I'm not trying to tell you guys to stop saying it because I totally understand the whole concept of why the black uh, culture are so strong with this word and wants to keep saying it the NIGGA one because of the history and because we we felt like we took it back and now we have something with power but again it derived from a, a bad place and I just think that as as a Christian I shouldn't be saying it so mm -hmm. I'm gonna pray for myself to not engage in those kind of words anymore mm -hmm. and I, it's working slowly on me but I just think that in Christ we need to get away from the words I mean the stuff the we need to get away from what's going on in the world and mm -hmm. really just sit here and think is this what God wants and let this message encourage you to not feel like you have to detach yourself from what you've always known maybe you've always grown up in that situation yeah. where that's just a common phrase and that's all you know well start thinking of yourself as a Christian first and foremost before you're a black person before you're a, a Latino or um, a minority of, of the minority culture in America think of yourself first and foremost as a Christian a child of the Most High God and God is certainly not calling you the n-word so I certainly don't refer to no. myself as the n-word I, I empower myself I say you're you know daughter of the Most High God you're created in God's image you're um, fearfully and wonderfully made you're beautiful you're talented you're this you're that always speaking life over myself because actually the n-word is rooted in death that's not producing anything uh, effective for you you're not speaking victory over your life when you're saying those words God said as we looked at in our foundational scripture Ephesians 4 um, 17 through 29 that you need to get rid of all evil, slanderous, abusive language, um, put away those things. You might have been like that before, but now you've been renewed in Jesus Christ. So act as if Jesus would act. And he certainly, even though he hung out with sinners, you certainly wouldn't catch him. Even in contemporary times, talking about what's good, my inner, and this and that. Because no, like he'll be like, he's a light. Y'all need to stop saying that. Yeah. And start calling your, your the people that you love brothers and sisters. Right. We're so and sisters that's right. true. So that's why I'm saying... I understand fully about it. I understand if you grew up that way or if it was a tradition. And I just think, and this is just speaking to those who are Christian. Because obviously, if you continue, if you want to continue to say it or it just makes, you know, it just, it's just what you've always known and you want to say it, then you go ahead. Because we're not trying to speak and tell you guys not what not to do. We're just saying, we advise you to not say it as Christians. If you're saying that you're a Christian, if you want to walk the right way. Just saying that word isn't isn't good because it, it it falls under derogatory because it it um it was rooted from a derogatory word. And even if you're not a Christian, say you're just a person who thinks it's empowering and thinks that you're taking back something from so, such and such the man or ever understand that that is like an ignorant mentality to have because using a a, a derogatory term. And saying that you're now going to empower yourself by calling yourself a derogatory term is just un unintelligent. That's like saying if somebody called you doo-doo face, for instance, like are you going to walk around saying, oh, yeah, doo-doo face is now empowering or anything like condescending. No, it's, it's not. You can find actually empowering words to use and how about you refer to yourself as that and also understand that, again, yeah, those. it's just not, it's just, I can't say it enough, like it's just not. An empowering word and it's not use. Christian like to be using it. So y'all pray for me to not say <laughs> y'all pray for me and y'all pray for each other. Like if you are trying to walk in Christ, like um or having a relationship with him, a new relationship with him, like I am, just think about your words and then you just ask the Lord because there's probably some other things that you're doing and probably other words that you're using that you are used to, and you don't realize it. Ask the Lord, you know, whatever I'm doing that I don't know is wrong, let me know. And Lord, if this is wrong, let me know. And he's going to let you know, especially if you're communicating with him that way. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what our video was today. We were specifically focusing on the Christian community and also the black community with the word. Um, we weren't really focused on the white community using the word because I just really think that the white community should just step away from the word, period, because of how it was rooted. Even though I was saying earlier that, you know, I had a situation where it didn't make me uncomfortable when my friend was saying the N-I-G-G-A word because again I was confident in myself I knew who I was and also 
I was also agreeing with the community saying that that was a word of, you know, positivity at the time. And it didn't bother me that she was saying that. So that's why I said it's fine with me if you say that with me. It's fine. It didn't bother me. But now that um, I'm walking a different road with Christ and I'm um, in a relationship with him, I now see that the word still has negative uh, negative vibes towards the end because it derived from a ne negative word. So therefore, you know, with the white community, I just think it's smart for them just to not say it at all. Um, just because it was a word that was rooted to be discriminatory specifically against black people. So it's just smart not to say it at all. And it's, it's smart for no one to say it, but it's just like... I understand the struggle of what happened, I understand the history behind it, and I understand why we hold on to the word now, like the N-I-G-G-A one, because I understand it completely. But I'm just saying for Christians, it's just not a good thing to be saying. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand where people are coming from. I understand people who say, you, could, you can't tell me what I can't say, especially if you're black. And, and I totally respect that because, again, I told you, I've said the word before. But just me as a Christian, I'm walking in a different light. So I'm going to work on not saying that word and work on saying other words that are looked at in a positive light. And as the Gospel Girls, we're here to try to encourage, you know, our peers, um, the young adult age group. And that's predominantly the group that uses it, I would say, the young people more so from, like, high middle school, high school, young adulthood. Yeah. Um... And so you, we just want to encourage you to how, on how to be more Christ-like as we grow in our walk because we're not perfect and we're always striving to you know, be better and be more like God, read our words. We just want to encourage our peers to do the same. And so out, out of a place of love, you know, it's it's best, it's behoove of you to re, re eliminate it from your vocabulary because, again, that's not how God would talk and that's not a loving way to, you know, address each other. And also, um, it's going to have residual effects no matter if you try to, you know, act like it won't or not. Understand that the N I G G E R N I G G A whatever from the outside looking in people are gonna see you as like a less of lesser intelligence and having been treated black Americans in particular have been treated like that systematically over a period of time you know don't we want to get away from that and start you know coming across as scholars and and um, educators and all these you know and actually empowering ways of life we want to be seen as that and not the same old same exactly. old so that's why it's just best to Black people to eliminate from their vocabulary, vocabulary. Um, white people, no matter what race you come from, just eliminate it. And especially as a Christian, that's not how we talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And you don't see any other culture really going around calling each other derogatory names. You only see that in the black culture. You don't see white people using slanderous terms to address people, each other on a regular basis. You don't see Hispanic people, you know, walking around calling them each other these demeaning terms you don't see any other culture really doing that but black people and again like you said it's, it's a way like and it's a mentality that black Americans affected by that word have of like trying to flip it and make themselves feel better about it but really at the end of the day that's really not what you're doing you're just making yourself look you know like you just of lesser intelligence and we don't want that for our people yeah and again we understand why that is a thing we understand why the other cultures don't have the issue with the word. We understand. We understand it was because of slavery. And we understand, like, the way that the black community is, it's heavily influenced by slavery. So we get it. We're not saying that um, they're better off because they don't have those words and they're not, they don't have this. We're not saying, you know, white people are better off and they're more superior because they don't have all this type of stuff going on. Because it, this was done to us. It's something that we can't take back. But... I feel like it might be counterproductive Absolutely. if we're using this word and they were demeaning us. Now I understand, you know, you know when you grow up. So we're just saying basically like for the Christian community, because that's the main focus we were focusing on. Because we, at, in the, at the end of the day, we don't want to tell you what you can and can't do. We're literally just in here, just here to advise you. At the end of the day, you can walk out the door and do what you want. But we're just advising you as Christians to who are trying to walk the straight walk with Christ just shouldn't say the word mm. whether you're black white brown blue whatever yeah so <laughs> all in all just to neutralize the effect of the n-word don't try to say oh I'm going to use it as a 
uh, term of endearment and that's going to do it and that's going to show you, you know just like let it go let the word go like find call your friend your brother your sister yeah. my homie my partner my dog whatever but the yeah. n-word no because it, it's just rooted in in, yeah. in mistakes <laughs> and, and again i don't want people to think that i'm being hypocritical because yes i've said it before and then i know people that know me and when they watch the video they were like well you said it before with me and i understand that but again i've said I am learning still, and I'm taking a walk with Christ, and I'm having a um, relationship with Him, and I'm um, slowly changing the things that I used to do and the things that I used to think were okay. Mm -hmm. And we can't change the world unless we change ourselves, and so that's all God wants to do with us. He's doing a mighty work in us. He's cleansing us, making us more like Him, making you more like Him, and imagine what the world will look like when you see little Christ shining. So just take those small steps and, you know, improving your vocabulary, letting unfruitful language go, and ushering in those actually prosperous, helpful words, and then you'll be just better off. So be blessed. Always remember to spread the gospel, like and subscribe to our videos, um, our channel, follow us on Facebook. We're still working on the Instagram and other social media. But for now, that's how you can see us. So. Yep, like and subscribe our videos. And we will definitely be back next week yes. with a uh, experimental kind of video. Um, we're just trying to get into the minds of the public about God and see if it's still prevalent in 2017. So. Check us out next time for that one. And thank you for listening to the Gospel Girls. Remember to spread the gospel.